You can see which months are typically hot for uranium and which months are cold for uranium. So we typically see the uranium price come down from March to July. And we see it come up from July In today's episode, we are going to apply machine learning techniques onto the uranium price to predict whether we're under or overvalued. We're going to see exactly how uranium performs across time and if there's any patterns of cyclicality that we can trace from 2006 to today, whether it be monthly peaks or monthly troughs. And also, one more thing, guys. Less than 15% of you who watch these videos are actually subscribed. So what's up with that? You're not feeling nuky enough? I don't know what it is. But if we can reach the 1,000 subscriber milestone, this channel will get monetized. And why is that important? Well, it'll let me get more guests, more high profile guests for you that you've enjoyed. We'll push out more content. And overall, it'll just make this entire operation more sustainable. So if you haven't already, please, please, please hit that subscribe button, get the channel monetized. I would really appreciate it. I'm not asking for any money, just a simple click. Doesn't cost you a thing. All right. With that said, let's go ahead and dive into our weekly uranium update. We are going to start things off with the uranium metals price. Before we get started on this though, Nothing in this video is financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Do your own due diligence. It's your money, your responsibility. So we are continuing our clean breakout in the uranium metals price currently sitting at 54.45. And we finished the week strong uh, with this green candlestick. Uh, significantly, not well, significantly up from the breakout at $50, uh, although it does span uh, a six week time span, uh, but nonetheless, a consistent move to the upside. Doesn't look like we're slowing either. This week's green candlestick was bigger than last week's green candlestick. And last week's green candlestick was bigger than the week before that. And the week before that was bigger than the week before that. So we're continuing to accelerate to the upside, although it's going largely unnoticed, especially on Twitter, uh, where you would expect a little bit more, uh, support for your boy UXC1 or UX1 here. But nonetheless, let's dive over to the URNM price. This is also the weekly candlesticks and URNM not looking as hot as the commodity price. So the equities are lagging behind the commodity price. We have this inverted hammer candlestick here for the week. This is a reversal signal, a signal that we're anticipating Probably a little bit more downside in the weeks to come. We do have this res, uh, support line that we've built up over the course of a couple of years now, since February 2021. We've tested more than three times. If you watch that episode with Patrick Kareem, he makes note that for a trend line to be a trend line, whether it be a support or a resistance line, it has to be touched at least three times. We've tested more than three times here, as you can tell. So this support line is fairly strong and robust. I would anticipate that the following week, uh, this coming week or the week after, uh, we begin testing this support line. But I mean, just look at this thing here. I don't, I mean, this thing can only squeeze so much. We have this resistance line that's coming down. Um, it's a clean resistance line. We hit our heads on it this week. We're rejected. Uh, I guess we, you know, maybe we might test it again next week or the weeks to come. But nonetheless, uh, I anticipate a little bit more squeezing uh, pretty much all the way out until late July until we might be able to see some sort of confirmation to the upside. When you look at URNM compared to the metal itself, so as I mentioned before, the, uh, the equities are largely lagging behind the metal. So this week, an inverted hammer candlestick when it comes to the equities compared to the metal. This is URNM divided by the uranium price. So we're stuck we're literally on support here, guys. So this is the support line. We've touched it numerous times. As you can tell here, here, and all the, all these points here. And this is where we're chilling. Now, are we going to go down or are we going to go up? This week will be pretty pivotal. We'll see. 
But this inverted hammer, hammer candlestick tells me that the, the probability is for more downside. So brace yourself. Hopefully I'm wrong. We'll see this week or the coming weeks ahead. Now let's also price the uranium price in gold. Um, one thing that we got out of our interview with Patrick Kareem was that we can't just confine ourselves to the U.S. dollar, to fiat. Uh, fiat is a moving target. So we've got to price our commodities to something a little bit more tangible, something akin to gold. Now, I know gold isn't a perfect inflation hedge either, but it's a lot better than, than USDs and dollars and fiat in general. So where are we at in the uranium price compared to gold? Some pretty strong green candlesticks. So we are headed on higher in the uranium price in gold. So you're essentially this means that you can buy more gold per pound of uranium. If you can find any uranium, that is. So uranium looking strong compared to gold. Now, essentially, the equities have not have not gotten the memo. Now, you can look at it in one of two ways. In one way, the equities are, most of these equities aren't even producing uranium to begin with. So you'll have people coming out and saying, oh, well, you know, input costs have gone up. And so it's squeezing the margins and all these miners. But keep in mind, most of these miners aren't producing a lick of uranium to begin with. So I don't think that's the case. I just believe that there's a lot of anxiety out there. There's a lot of bad sentiment out there with the current uh, situation in the market, the debt ceiling talks, all this kind of thing, kind of putting a dampening effect on these higher risk equities. Risk off, essentially. How is Sprott shaping up? So let's see. Has Sprott been buying any uranium on the market? This is really important. So we've been seeing a steady rise up in the uranium price. And here's what's cool, guys. Sprott hasn't bought sh crap since, what is it, late April. So Sprott's been pretty dry. And nonetheless, the uranium spot price has been moving up without the help of Sprott. The Sprott Uranium Physical, the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust Vehicle. You know, again, this was the arbiter of the big move that we saw in late 2021. You see these big buying, all this big buying here going from summer 2021, stretching all the way out to the fall of 2022. As you can see here, there hasn't been much buying here either, denoted by this chart. And there's one more thing I want to show you guys. Where is it? All right. So we've been at a negative. We've been below NAV now for quite some time. This green line is the SPUT share price. And this yellow line is the net asset value share price. So this is what SPUT should be valued at. But the share price is well below that. So SPUT can't buy any more uranium off the spot market until this green line makes parity at the very minimum or goes above this yellow line. So spot's been out of the equation for a good part now. We've been below NAV in large part since, I don't know, this uh, May 6th. So about a year now we've been below NAV. The spot's been MIA, but nonetheless, the uranium price is continuing to rise up. Okay, now the good stuff. Machine learning has taken the world by storm. So how can we use machine learning to help us make better predictions and make better conclusions and recommendations on our commodity stocks? So what I did here, this is done through time series forecasting and Python through something called Facebook Profit. It's essentially a machine learning algorithm. I essentially fed it oil, gold, and the DXY as predictors to the Sprott Uranium Physical Trust price as a proxy for the uranium price. And essentially what we've got here, we've got the actual SPUT price here in blue, as you can see, and then we've got the, pre the model's predicted price. So this is what the model thinks should be the predicted price. And you can see it largely tracks the actual price. 
uh, this has an 89% R squared value. And basically what that means is that 89% of all the noise in this data is being captured in this model. So that's really good. Almost 90% there. How we can use this is that we can see that at times when the actual price is significantly above the, uh, the predicted price, that's a sign that the actual price is overvalued compared to what the model thinks is fair value. So we see in all these red circles, anytime it reaches a huge gap between the predicted and actual price, we see huge declines following after. We see it here uh, in 2007. We also see it here in 2011. We see it in these two uh, peaks here in 2021 and 2022. We got significantly ahead of the predicted price. We got significantly ahead of the predicted price here in, in late 2021 as well. And in both cases, we came crashing all the way back down to reality. We came crashing, we corrected all the way back down to this predicted price. So where are we sitting now? We're currently somewhere around here. So we're considered undervalued to the uranium, uh, to this uh, machine learning model, what this is telling us. So again, this is taking all this data. So based on what the oil prices stay, what the gold prices stay, what the, what the dollar strength is, and uh, just the historic uranium price patterns, taking all that into consideration and creating a prediction of what the uranium price should be. And right now, we're below that prediction price. And anytime we're below it, as you see with these green circles, we typically correct up to meet back these red, uh, to meet back the predicted model price or the fair value price. We saw it here in mid uh, or yeah, in late 2020 and in early 2021, we were far below the predicted price and we soon caught up to it. We overcorrected in the case of 2021. We uh, we overcorrected here in case of 20, uh, 2020. So, uh, and then before that, and, and then after that, we also saw it uh, significantly uh, underpriced in early 2022. And then we saw it go all the way, jump back up from 1250 to about 1750. So this is where we're at now. Does this mean that, you know, we could see a, a shot to the upside or could we have more downside to go? But I would look at this model and say, you know, it's been right for quite, for a lot of these scenarios. <clears throat> so, you know, and another one right here as well. I didn't, I didn't circle it, but here you can see in 2010, um, we were, the blue line was far below the red line. And then we saw a huge shot up to the upside in 2020, in 2010, sorry. So this also comes from the model. This is telling us the trend uh, on a year to year basis. And this is basically a year, this is you know our low resolution trend at the very top graph here. But if you come all the way down here and you look at this yearly trend, you can see which months, or sorry, monthly trend, you can see which months are typically hot for uranium and which months are cold for uranium. So we typically see the uranium price come down from March to July. And we see it come up from July um, all the way out to March. So we're currently in a down, in a historic downturn of uranium. And, you know, this, this again goes to show you why it's so significant that we're seeing moves up in the uranium price because we're sitting here in May. We should have been going down, not up. This is from a historical lens. It's taking all that data from 2006 to date and it's saying historically, this has been the trend. It's been down, 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 not up, but we're going up. So once we break free of these summer doldrums, Again, remember in 2021, when did that huge shoot uh, shot up in the uranium price happen? Happened in the late summer after July, which is which you know confirms what we're seeing here in this chart. So if we can make it all the way past July, we'll have the we'll have the winds in our sails. We'll have additional historic uh, seasonal tailwind ahead of us. 
And so, yes, the equities have been lagging, but look at it this way. Money is made in mispriced markets. And the uranium equities don't get more mispriced than this. So not telling you, not financial advice, not telling you what to do, but that's what the data is telling us. Don't care what the YouTube talking heads are saying, aside from my guests, of course, but let's look at the data, see what it tells us. Data is looking good. If you enjoyed this content, go ahead and give it a like. And if you subscribe to the channel, like I said, if you haven't already, it would be a huge help getting us monetized, hitting that 1,000 subscriber benchmark. And with that said, I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye.